Hi, my name is Brianna, and I'm doing a report on Henry Cartier Brisson. This is a quote that was quoted by Henry Cartier Brisson. He says, Think about the photo before and after, never during. The secret is to take your time. You mustn't go too fast. The subject must forget about you. Then, however, you must be very quick. I believe this goes with his book of the decisive, decisive moment because he takes his time to take his photographs but he still gets the image in the perfect moment. A little bit about Henri Cartier-Bresson. He was born in on August 22, 1908 in France. Uh, he grew up with a wealthy family his father was made a fortune because he was a textile manufacturer, but apparently his parents were very frugal. He is interested in arts and literature and was educated in that in Paris. He's very creative and apparently creativity runs in his family because his grandfather was an artist and so his father could draw and he was a painter and also a photographer. Uh, he joined the army and shortly after his release he traveled to Africa for hunting. However, he lost interest in, interest in that sport and he took up an interest in photography with a brownie camera that he received as a gift and started taking photographs in Africa. Brisson died at his home on August 3rd, 2004, at the age of 95, shortly before his 96th birthday. His photographic careers, his photographs were in, influenced by surrealist theories of irrational, um, more than they were of the art of surrealists. Um, he was the founder of Magnum Photos Agencies, uh, which gave photographers rights to their images uh, in, if magazines used them. And today, Magnum has over a million photos in their library. He's also had exhibits in museums, such as the Museum of Modern Art. And his photographs have been published in Life magazine. And he, his most successful thing was that he published a book called The Decisive Moment in 1952. It was a huge success because it was one of the most influential books in France. And he included images of everyday events as well as major world events that tell stories of what's going on. This is a photograph showing the everyday life of people in France. Uh, they're a little messy and they're enjoying their life though, enjoying their, uh, I think it was a break from their job or a vacation. Um, this is one of my most favorite photographs is he captured time in this photograph of the man running over the water and he's just right over the water in the air slightly while he was running. This photograph is of a French painter and the perspective is interesting because he took the photo from above and it shows the environment of the painter. So it's a portrait but it shows the environment of what painter has so it shows his paintings and his paint and the ladder. This photograph was part of the series that was in Time magazine or not Time sorry Life magazine as a photographic essay. It featured uh, Gandhi and how it affected the country and this was a photograph of them announcing Gandhi's death. 
now this image also goes with that series and this is a photograph of the cremation of Gandhi and apparently that's the man uh, Gandhi's secretary so he's watching Gandhi's cremation this was taken in China and it's showing the mob of people and people are fighting and there's police in the photograph apparently 10 people were crushed to death in this while this photo was taken this photograph was also taken in China and the person is a blind fortune teller and the I just like the nice clean streets in the photograph and they go with the fortune teller it just seems like a fortune teller type scene for um, an unnatural their natural state environment this photograph I don't know a lot about but I like the perspective of it it looks like it was taken down low to the ground and it draws your attention it goes straight to the man over there and the cannon. I'll, all I know is that it was taken in 1933 in Italy. This is also one of my favorite photographs of his and it's also one of his most famous. It captures time in the photograph by capturing the man on the bicycle at the right time in between the building and the staircase so he's not covered by the staircase and not covered by the building and the staircase goes down and kind of leads your way to the man on the bicycle and I also like the vantage point of it being taken from above I don't know a lot about this image there wasn't a lot of information but I loved the contrast of the image and it just looks like the cat is staring at the bird ready to pounce but he got the photograph before the cat pounced on the bird so you never know they could be friends and the cat is just staring at it this next photograph is of a fire in Manhattan 1947 this one is a very interesting photograph because the smoke blends in with the sky and the clouds and the angle he took it at is low to the ground and you can still see the city in between the smoke and everything and the composition of it and the contrast it's a very nice photograph this image I found interesting and the framing of it's very nice the hole in the wall leads you to look at the people in the background of the children and their pain and whatever else they're doing in the photograph I like this photo because I'm a horse person and it's a photograph of harnesses for funeral horses. It's very contrasty and it's interesting because the way he photographed it you're looking directly at the tack. A normal person who would be standing on a tack rack you would be looking down at it so it's a different perspective as well because it's like maybe if he sat down and took the photo or something so it's straight on so you see all the details and decorations on the tack and this one's just interesting because of the vantage point and the ladies alone sitting there resting her leg on the cane on the bench and this is a photo taken in the rice fields it's fair the contrast and um, the rice fields I love the reflection in the rice fields I'm speeding this up because of time limits on this project, the thing. Um, this photograph was taken in China and it's interesting because of the fog. It gives a mysterious effect 
and feeling to the picture and also the man in the cloak is very sharp and crisp and it's just a v overall very interesting photograph. Um, this one I just thought was cool because the walls are a mosaic of bits of mirrors and it sounds like it would be very hard to photograph and he captured this picture in an excellent way and it looks very neat. This is of a funeral and the reason I think it's interesting is you have the scene it the scene in the picture and you have the people leading up to that building there's a path from the people which are carrying the casket and going up to the building and it just my eyes are drawn to there in this photograph I find this kind of comical um, <laughs> it's a picture of a man sleeping He's a fruit vendor, and the reason Brisson took this photo was because of the drawing in the background, and I think it's because they're very similar looking. It's just, it's a funny image. This picture was taken in New York in 1947 and the reason I like it is the vantage point is unique it's down lower as well or it might be in the middle but it's still interesting because the walls are so close together and they're drawing you directly to the man sitting there feeding the cat or whatever he's doing with the cat your attention goes there. It's also very contrasty and it's a nice image. The significance of Henri cartier brisson he's one of the founders of Magnum Photos and that's, I believe that's a great significance because he made it so photographers have rights to their images and magazines and don't own them. And then his book, The Decisive Moment, was by far his most successful book. And he made, made it the most known, that he's most known for it. He's greatly known for the composition of his images in the book as well as the simult simultaneous recognition in a fraction of a second of the signific significance of an event as well as precise organization of forms of which he gave the event a proper expression such as a man running over the puddle. 